August 20th, 1989, was a warm summer day in Norristown, Pennsylvania. For Bill and Karen Kilgore, it seemed like the perfect time to catch up on some outdoor chores. It was just a routine Sunday. I was cleaning up outside. I usually rake up and, and try and clean up the garden and everything. Uh, Bill had just got done mowing the lawn, and he was going to wash the cars. And he must have been going to get something to wash the car. He found his football. Charlie. Hey, all right. Little ball, buddy. Yeah. Chuck Faulkner lived next door to the Kilgores. That was the summertime. It was nice outside. We just figured we'd start tossing the football around. And then that's when Bill missed the football. Bill went over to, you know, get the football. He slid down the bank on his uh, rear end. Doesn't look it from here. Oh, Chuck, something's stinging me. You all right? No, I can't get up. They're on me. Something's stinging me. Something's stinging me, Chuck. Yeah. They're all over me. He really couldn't get up because he couldn't get good footing. So that's when he turned around and reached up, and then I pulled him up from the back. This thing will be Charlie. My first concern was to try and get the bees off of his legs. That, that's where I could see them the most. I was trying to swat him off and not get stung at the same time. Chuck, do you have anything that we could put oh, on Yeah, let me run in the house. I'll get some antiseptic. Okay. All right, thanks. So Bill and I just kind of stood outside, and I was still trying to help him, trying to understand what had happened to him. Get him off, All right, Bill, here you go. Here, try this. All right. Spray some more here. Chuck came outside, and we sprayed his legs down, and he said he thought that that felt better. I asked him if he was allergic to them, and his response was, no, he, he, he was not allergic to them that, that he knew of. And, and I figured that the first aid treatment would, would probably take care of it. All right, if you need anything, give me a call, all right? Okay. They really hurt, Karen. Chuck went inside. We came inside. Bill was going to get something to drink, but he never made it that far. That was when I went into the bathroom, just checking out to see if we had anything to help him. It had been less than five minutes since Bill had been stung by the swarm of yellow jackets. Hey, Karen. Karen. His face was red. His body was red. And he was sweating, and he told me, he said, Kara, my tongue's starting to swell. There's something right. strange going on here. Okay, just relax. Take a deep breath. You want something to drink? He okay. couldn't see. His vision was getting real blurry. So he said, you have to take me to the hospital. Just relax, you okay? I want to go. All right. All right. Trouble I don't remember thinking it was very, very serious, and I don't know why. When I think about it now, it still gives me the, the chills to think, why didn't I see this coming? Why didn't I realize how serious this was? I remember holding his arm and putting him in the passenger side of the car and I came back to lock the door and he screamed to me, he's carried on of time, we don't have time for that. I started to drive, I took off down the alley going much faster than I should have been going in the alley. My chest hurts. I can't breathe. And I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And I could hear him gasping and gasping for breath. It seemed like he was seizing. His body was convulsing and shaking. And it wasn't long before he stopped talking. And I just knew that if I was gonna, if I was gonna do anything to save him, I had to do it. And if we would have had a car accident or something else, that was the chance I had to take. I, had, I knew that he needed help. And I had to get him there as quickly as I could. It's five to ten minutes at the most to the hospital. It seemed like an hour. It seemed like I couldn't get there. We had turned one of the corners, and as we turned, his whole body must have gone limp because he knocked the gear shift into neutral. I looked at him, and I... I thought he was dead. I remember thinking, what am I going to do without him? I don't, I don't know what to do. Then we got to an intersection where there were several cars in front of me and the light was red. So finally I figured this was it. I mean, either he was going to die or we were going to die. And then it was like a miracle. I just saw this ambulance. 
I remember the paramedic looking at me, and I thought, this is it. This is my, the answer to my prayers. In the ambulance, a three-member crew led by paramedic Stephen Hare was transporting a patient to Montgomery Hospital. I could see how upset she was. She had mascara running down her face. She was reaching over and screaming towards her husband. And at that point, I told my partner, I said, I think there's a medical emergency in the car behind us. We were only two blocks from the hospital. There was no traffic lights, no other things to impede our progress at that point, so we just continued in, and they followed us right in. We stopped the ambulance in front of the emergency room. Ma'am, what's wrong? She said, my husband's been stung by bees. I don't think he's breathing. Reached in, I shook him. I said, sorry, you all right? He was ice cold to the touch, very diaphoretic. Didn't appear to be breathing at all. And his face and his neck were all swollen, which is typical from a, a severe reaction to bee sting. Bill's condition was deteriorating rapidly. We didn't take him into the emergency room because the care that he needed needed to be done immediately. To run in and get a litter and bring it out would have taken a good two minutes, which we felt that at the time he did not have. Emergency room nurse Mary Beth Hardnock was on duty that day. When I realized he was in respiratory arrest and he needed help, my major concern was getting him back into the emergency room where I felt more comfortable dealing with the situation than out in the parking lot. Okay, Abbott and Happy. You've got some epinephrine, which is adrenaline, a naturally occurring substance in you. Whenever you get excited, that's what really gets you pumping and so forth. And we gave somebody that through the endotracheal tube. All right. Okay, epi's in. All right, back it down. After he was intubated and the epinephrine was given, he became very combative with us. It took about seven people to hold him down. We're breathing for you. Oh, we got some epinephrine. It was like tearing my heart out to watch him. I wanted so bad for him to be okay, and he didn't know that. I don't think that he knew that. And I thought that maybe he was going to die, and I wasn't going to be able to say anything to him, tell him that I tried to help him. And I just felt that, um, I felt very lonely and very empty. Watch your back. Watch your back. Okay. Everybody okay. watch out. Coming through. You bet two. All right, get him in the room one. And I just remember looking at him and thinking, I hope I see you again. I hope I see you sometime inside. Look, we'll be with you in a minute, okay? okay? Bill responded well to treatment and was out of danger within a few hours. When I transferred him to ICU for observation, I felt good that we had saved somebody. He was in the right spot at the right time, and we had done a good job. Without question, Steve Hare, who was the paramedic outside, the first initiated to care for this person is the, definitely the hero in this situation. His fast reaction and his knowledge of, of what to do was instrumental in preventing my death. Under the care of allergist Dr. Richard Schwartz, Bill is receiving a series of shots to build up his resistance to yellow jacket stings. They have told me that there's a 98% chance of success rate with these allergy shots. Quite honestly, there's times where I'd like to be stung again just to see if they're working. But I haven't quite worked up that nerve. Take a shot right back here. Okay. Okay, there you go. Now, Bill, why don't you have a seat there? Okay. About 20% of the population, if we tested them, would show some degree of allergy to the bee stings. However, only a very small percentage of those would go on and have a severe reaction such as Bill did. If they start to develop an allergic reaction, which involves the entire skin getting flushed, which involves itchiness, especially if they develop tightness in the throat or breathing difficulties, or if they feel dizzy, they should seek emergency medical care immediately because the reaction can progress very quickly. I think in a lot of ways this pulled us closer together. There are times when I just stop and I look at him and I think that you know, I, I could be all by myself now. You might not be here. And a lot of times I try and keep that in mind. I feel extremely fortunate and lucky that I'm still here. There really isn't a lot of things I could have done differently to avoid this. Except, I guess, one, I should have caught the ball. Next. What is in the house that's scaring you? I felt that they were there to possibly kidnap or do harm to Kelly. Are you looking at me? 